Today's gospel reading tells us about the denying of oneself and taking up your cross and following Christ. And we hear Christ mention the cross before he's on the cross. And he knows that for Roman authorities that anything that was of a a treacherous crime deserved death on the cross. And the cross, as we've mentioned before, was the, the absolute most painful, humiliating, and torturous death that anyone could receive. But Christ mentions in his words to his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, if anyone wants to follow me, they first have to deny themselves, take up their cross. In other words, walk to their death and then come after me. Now, not only does he say this and show um, that he is going to use the cross as a transforming tool and a a sign from death to become a sign of life, but he also reminds us, too, that we have to do some changing in ourselves, some denials that we are confronted with in our lives. Now, when we're small, I remember being small. It was kind of the beginning of the 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 space shuttle program and uh, in the in the 70s and and uh, looking and saying you know I really want to be a an astronaut I thought that was a cool thing then I wanted to be a mailman then I wanted to be you know all these different things and all those different things led my life in a whole bunch of different directions uh, from studying music to being uh, in a class for a series seven license to be a stockbroker Yes, it's a strange thing. And that's when I realized um, by divine guidance and by the divine voice of God that I should go to the seminary. I was actually sitting in a class, uh, the first day of class uh, in this stockbroker school. I had got a job at a, at a, um, a brokerage firm and I sat down for the class and I heard you will go to the seminary. And then I realized, wait a second, what am, I, what am I doing with my life? What about my scholarship I had for music? What about where I'm at now? What about all these other things that I thought I was going to do? Uh, just kind of came to a, an abrupt end and an abrupt change. And thinking about that and thinking about the, the gospel reading this morning, it's a reminder to us that our desires for our lives or the things that we think we want to do might not necessarily be God's will. And in that, denying ourselves and taking up our cross means really putting the cross in front of us, putting God in front of us and saying, what am I going to follow? Who is God? And what is he really calling me to do? Is he calling me to be, uh, you know, uh, one thing or another or whatever the, the case is? Or is he calling me to to do something completely different from what I thought I was going to do. Now, we see this usually in the first year of college students, right? What happens? For all those who have been to college, you go to college thinking you're going to be, you know, a chemist, or you're going to be in a nursing program, and you end up a civil engineer or a, a CPA or something. So it's not always the things that we desire that we start out to do that um, we end up doing. But the people in life who are the most peaceful with who they are are the people who realize that they're trying to do the will of God. And trying to do the will of God means finding out what that cross is. What are you going to carry in your life? So everyone's cross is different. We've heard those stories about going through a room and uh, picking out a cross and you end up picking the cross that you had in the first place and all these little... um, unique reminders of stories of carrying cross, that everyone's cross is different, but everyone's life is different. And Christ is calling us today to deny ourselves. And that almost sounds like, what, who are we then if we deny ourselves in order to take up his cross? What, what happens to us if we have to deny ourselves? And the denying of oneself is really the denying of the promotion of your thoughts as being the only thoughts and your will being the only will. So when we deny ourselves something, are we not trying to do the better thing? So if you look at someone who's serious about exercise 
and then the, the dessert tray comes out at a wedding, and then they stand there, and they're, they're really kind of focusing on their exercise, and they say, well, you know what, I'm gonna, not going to have this because I'll just have to walk it off in the treadmill or whatever tomorrow. They deny themselves that. Or someone who might have a medical condition who can't eat a particular food. And that's, food is kind of a, a basic thing that we all end up at at some point or another. But they deny themselves to enhance something else. But when it comes to our lives, do we ever really want to deny ourselves of anything? Do we ever really want to stop and say, I don't want to do this because I'm not quite sure? Or I think I should hold back because I think God might be calling me in a different direction. If you look at all the ruptured and disintegrated marriages in the world and in our midst, what are the problems that happen? Was this inability to deny oneself the, the freedom, if that's what you even want to call it, to go and do whatever you want to do the inability to follow the cross that's before you, which is the cross of fidelity, the cross of parenthood, the cross of righteousness in front of us. Now, everyone has a different cross. Not everyone's married. Not everyone has children. Not everyone's a grandparent. Not everyone's a sibling. Not everyone had uh, natural parents that had brought them up. Some were adopted. Some were orphans. Some had made their way by different means uh, through to this country. Everyone has a different story. But really, what is the cross that's in front of us? And how do we deny ourselves? Is to take a good look at ourselves and say, what am I doing? Am I really doing something to further my spiritual life? Or am I just doing something to get money? Am I doing something to get notoriety? Am I doing something to get attention? You know, I have yet to see someone drive in a sports car. And when I mean sports car, I mean like, you know, Lamborghini or that, that kind of stuff, you know, the stuff that's out of reach, and drive and then sit somewhere and then just at a stoplight and just kind of look around and see who's looking at them, right? I mean, it's all about how they feel in this car or how they're, they're, they're going to look, or even people with their homes. How's my home going to look when people go past it? And what am I going to keep up with the Joneses and what they're doing to their home? And it becomes a doing of an action that has really no focus, no drive, no cross in front of us. So when you look at the cross of Christ that you all have and look at denying yourselves, think about the things that you indulge yourselves with. What are the things that are your trigger points? Whether it's gluttony, whether it's laziness, whether it's uh, a potty mouth, whether it's uh, alcohol or nicotine or whatever it is, how do we look at that and say, how can I deny myself in order to get something better? And what is that better? Is the discipline, the grace of God, that comes by denying ourselves, picking up our cross, and moving forward. As has been mentioned by many of the Christian writers throughout the years, that the doorway to heaven is narrow. And if we are carrying a bunch of other things, we can't grab on to God. We can't even fit through. And if we refuse to let go of those things through the sacrament of confession and through the, the almsgiving that we're called to, to give to others, then how can we fit through this narrow door if we're grabbing all our stuff? So as you look at your lives and as you look at what is important to you, think, does it, is this really what I'm doing? Is this what God wants me to do? And to really think, even from a young age, when we dream of all these things that we want to do, where does God fit in? Is it something we want to do for notoriety? Or is it something that we do that's a talent? Is it something that God has called us to do? And do, do we, at some point in time, come to realize what our true gifts are? The true callings from God. What are they? So in picking up your cross and moving forward, you have to do a couple things. You have to first realize, what are you doing? I think that's the first key. What am I doing? To be aware of what you're doing. You know, I mentioned to someone the other day that um, I was talking with someone, and every time I would ask a question that they would have a, a reservation or 
Uh, it was kind of a, a poignant question. This was a, a counseling type thing. Um, every time I'd ask them something, they would, they'd reach down and they would scratch their leg. So I knew I was on to something just by paying attention to the body language. And every time I would say something, they would reach down and scratch their leg. So I see people scratching their legs now. Um, that's one of those things, you know, if you start doing this, then other people will do it too. You ever do that? No? All right, now everybody's just looking at me like I'm crazy. So they started scratching their leg when the question would become awkward. And I mentioned to them, I said, do you realize every time I ask you something that you're, you're hesitating in answering, you're scratching your leg? And then, and then it all focused on their leg. Then they were like trying to stay there still. And you know, they say, if you want to stop a Greek, Greek from talking, what do you do? You grab their hands, right? Because their hands are always, you know, waving in airplanes. So they focused on that. But one of the things that we do in our lives that we don't even realize we're doing, do we take time to stop and to look and take an inventory of our behaviors, our language, our thoughts, our actions, our desires, our interactions with people, and really take an inventory and say, what am I really doing? How do I really want to be, and how am I really? And it, it can be a scary thing, really looking at ourselves and saying, this is really what I am, but this is who I want to be. Then you take in the midst of that, the things that you really are, after you inventory yourself, and then say, what do I want to be with the cross in front of me? How can I deny myself and my own personal desires to, to stray me away from God? And how can I pick up that cross and move forward? What's one of the clearest ways to deny yourself on a Sunday morning? It's by getting up and coming to church, right? Not flipping on the, you know, the pre, pre-show game or whatever the, they have in the mornings or watching the news or all the other terrible things that um, you know, people can flip on in the morning to watch and hear. It's to come to church. We deny ourselves the idea of we are going to be the bearers of bad news first, right? And we come to church and focus. So take an inventory of yourself. Put the cross in front of you. Visualize it in front of you and say, Am, what, is what I'm working for in my life leading me to the cross or is it leading me away? And then when we pick up the cross, the key is to have some stamina to carry it. Even Christ fell when he carried his cross. I mean, think of this big, huge cross. And, and the Romans were brutal. They Carry your own cross. We're not going to carry it. We're not going to sweat. We're going to whip you until you take it up, and then we'll put it in the ground. We'll nail you to it. And we'll put you on it, but you're going to carry it the whole way. And they took Christ through the streets carrying this cross after he had been beaten, whipped, with a crown on his back, exhausted, dehydrated, all those things, carries it up. And what happens? As he falls, and he can't go anymore, what happens? Anybody? A person named Simon comes, the Cyrene. He comes, and what does he do? He carries it the rest of the way. A friend of Christ carries his cross the rest of the way. So we have to be careful not to think that we are so strong and we're so beyond Christ that we can do everything ourselves and that, yes, I can carry the cross and I can go all the way to the end of my life? No, you're probably going to fall. And who's going to pick you up? Who's going to help you carry your cross? Is the loved ones around you. The people that you love, the people that you trust, the people that are there for you are going to pick it up with you and they're going to walk where? Not in a different direction. They're going to walk exactly the direction that you're being called. So as we see what we do, as we see the cross, as we grab the cross, we have to have that endurance to try and make it as far as we can. And when we realize that we're empty and we're falling, to reach out for those around us that we love. And they, too, if they're focused on the cross, will help you carry it in the direction that you need to go. Denying yourself is not the worst thing in the world. And it's not the, the most difficult concept to wrap your head around. Just think of temperance, of moderation, of focus, and keep your life in the rails of focusing towards God. Because, believe me, if you keep going in the direction that God doesn't want you to go, sooner or later he's going to reroute you, 
and he's going to reroute you in a drastic way and move you to which way he wants you to go. So in this, pick up your crosses, look at yourselves, focus on where you're going, and focus on God, and you too will become true followers of Christ. And remember that he, Christ, is the one too that is there with us as we're walking, and he is there behind us, and when we fall, he picks us up as well. So even if you don't have a lot of people around you, you still have the church. And that's an important thing to remember, that as you um, think of the people in your lives, you should think of the church as a, a, a living thing in your life. You know, we haven't had a janitor since January, beginning of January, and it's not necessarily the worst thing because we've had volunteers come, and those volunteers who have come to help clean have had a personal relationship with the church and a personal sense and, and love for the church, as if it was an elderly family member that you were a caretaker of. The same thing, when you call for someone to be a nurse, or you call for hospice, or you call for a caregiver to come into your home, you interview them. They, you just do. And you're like, is this the right fit? Is this person good? Are they going to be the right fit for this person? And then you sign off and you say, yes, this is good. And sometimes it works out long term, sometimes it doesn't. Same thing with nursing homes. They're like shoes. You try them on to see if they fit. Some do, some don't. Some last for a while and then they have to be changed. The same thing with the church. The church has had a difficult time finding a janitor for the simple reason that it is a living thing. It is alive. This is a, a walls and icons and a structure that breathes holiness. And in that breathing of holiness, it doesn't, you can't just pick one person to do it. It has to be a precise, a precise person because it's alive. And I tell you this because I want you to understand that the church is very much alive. And the church is there for you on your path to denying yourself and on your path to picking up your cross. That the church will always be there for you. Will always be the one when you fall to help you get up as well. Through the grace of Christ, through the ministry of the church, through the priesthood, it will be there in the sacramental life of the church to pick you up and to guide you in the coming years. So focus on what you do. Pick up your cross. Think about where you're going with it. Realize you're going to fall. You're not going to be perfect. The church is here for you. Your family is there for you. And also Christ is there to lift you up always. Amen.